Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much. This is part two of now, I would say, a four-part series, and we're going to get into uh, sin, okay? Uh, the last message, I titled it, When the Accident Happens, because some folks, they know, they feel something is about to go down, right? Others uh, you don't feel anything, but you know, we live in a sinful world. So when the accident happens, do you want to be on the right side with God or do you want to be on the wrong side with God? OK, some folks, you have experienced what it's like to be in darkness. OK, and we touched on some serious serious issues uh as well as the scripture in the last message uh we went through John 3:16 uh down to verse 21 now we're talking about sin okay let us head over to Isaiah 59:2 and there is an audio message that gets into the entirety of Isaiah 59 which is some very very good stuff um, which gets into sin, confession, and redemption. But we're just going to zero in on Isaiah 59 2, and then I'm going to tie this uh, scripture into our modern day living. And once again, keeping on track with when accidents happen. Okay. So Isaiah 59 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Sometimes accidents happen because they're wake up calls for some folks. They're wake up calls because God has already used his messengers, his signs, his visions, his wonders and everything else to warn them. But some folks go ahead and proceed to do some things that are simply put bad. It starts off with a thought and then that thought grows into an action. And so when these sorts of things take place, sin gets in the way of a relationship with God. Now, in the last message, you know that God loves you. He loves you so much that he gave his only son, right, uh, and gave up his only son. And all he wants is for us to believe, to believe in him, okay, and so that we can have eternal life. But if I am refusing to serve a righteous God, and I prefer to do what I want, and what I want is sinful, is disturbing, is disgusting, is crazy, is wild, is fun, is whatever. When that accident happens and I try to call out to a righteous God, according to 59.2, his uh, or, or my sins are going to cause a problem. In my prayer or my request or even my demand reaching God's ears. I'm talking to someone. But your iniquities, your wickedness, right? Your repeated sin has separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. God doesn't answer my prayers. I don't understand. For, and I'm going to re read a little bit further, for your hands are stained with blood, your fingers with guilt, your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue mutters wicked things. I'm doing some stuff I have no business doing. So this is why I cannot get an answer to prayer. This is why I can't get breakthrough. This is why God seems to be so distant from me. That's right, sinner backslider that's right sometimes we point the finger at other people right and we talk about them and how you know at times they're doing a b and c that hurt us and all that but there are times when we got to sit down and we got to look at well uh what part did we play in the confusion what part did we play 
in confusing our minds and putting ourselves in emotional, physical, and spiritual bondage? How many times does somebody have to come and tell us that you got to let go of certain people, places, and things in order for you to be able to come up higher, in order for you to experience freedom, in order for you to ultimately have a relationship with the one true God, the God who says, yes, he loves you. But he's not going to hear from you if you continue to be in this sinful mindset. Your sins have separated you from God. And so God turns away. He turns away from folks that continue to do what they do. Oh, I'm a child of God. Hmm. Sometimes we can't tell, right? We can't tell because for the simple fact is, is that some people are not going to change they may be a good actor or actress for a while but they get to a place where nope i'm not going to change this is me all day every day about about it (laughs) right so they want to be about about it okay well you can be about about it all by yourself okay and some folks they got blood on their hands they need a savior like yesterday but i digress So the next step in getting this peace with God, right? Getting some things understood before the accident happens, right? Because we're going to have the accidents. I just want to be on the right side with God, right? I don't know about you, but I want to be on the right side with God. Some of you all say, well, I want to be on the right side too. I'm going to keep listening. All right, good. Okay, don't let distractions keep you from listening to What is being said today? The enemy don't want you to receive this truth. He's going to be critical. He's going to move on you to want to click off and do something else. But hang on. All right. So. When Jesus came along. He saved us. From sin. Now, if I know that wickedness is out here, I know that the the devil, he's roaming, he's prowling, he's always busy. Okay, wouldn't it make sense for me to draw near to this Jesus, right? This savior. If I'm having a tough time or maybe I'm not having a tough time, but I just got some things that I just want to be at peace with in my spirit. And God has laid some things upon my heart and I need to be dealt with on those. I mean, you know, there's a lot of reasons as to why people want to receive Jesus. So Romans 5, 8, let me take you there. And I'm reading out of this, this uh, life or I'm actually the living Bible and the other scriptures uh, I read out of um the um, New International Version, okay, um, as well as a New International Version Study Bible by Tyndale, um, and that's a Life Application Bible. So, just wanted to let you know in case you like the reading of uh, these Bibles, because they're very easy to understand, unlike the King James Holy Bible at times. Okay, so Romans five eight. I gave you some time to get there. Let us begin reading, shall we? But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Okay. God, he wanted us to know just how much he loved us. Okay. By sending his son to die. Okay. To die for folks he didn't even know. Would you, would you do something like that? (laughs) Okay. And of course that is while we are still sinners. So something that was done thousands and thousands of years ago still is pertinent to our faith to this day. Okay. So when you talk to people who want to remove Christ out of, out of, uh, your personal belief or others or what have you, that's a problem. If you don't hear anything about Jesus or they, or they make him seem like he's just nothing more than a teacher and that's it. That is a religion that you should not want to uh, continue to be 
uh, following after, okay? Because this is heavy, what Jesus did. And to remove that out of any type of doctrine, somebody is in serious error and you get from up under that teaching, okay? Sorry, I can't continue to go to this church. Okay. Now, on this quest of having peace with God before the accident happens, before the surprise, before the emergency, it could be anything. It doesn't have to be an accident. It could be something that somebody did to you on purpose. But once again, we want to be on the right side with God. We want to be living the righteous life. We want to do what is right. We want to walk in light, not in darkness. We want to be about truth and not about the lie. You see how it all interplays with walking with the one true God. He's about all things good, righteous, true, honest. Okay. But Satan is about all things that go against everything that God stands for. So when you're in the presence of some individuals, they can suck the energy out of a room because they refuse to receive truth, because they refuse to change, because they refuse to walk in peace, in love, in harmony with others. Satan, he binds us. He keeps us in a state of confusion, a state of unforgiveness, a state of uh, ignorance, denial, okay, rejection and so forth, because he knows that there's freedom in that. If I give up my unforgiveness, if I give up the lies, if I give up uh, rejecting the one true God, then that means that I'm moving away from satanic uh, entities and, uh, you know, affiliations and so forth. And I'm moving toward the things of God. You know that <laughs> haters don't want you to be happy. You know that there's some folks that don't want you to walk in the way that God has called you. You know that some folks are jealous. They see what God is doing and they wish and hope that they can be close to the Lord, but the Lord hasn't called them. Because they refuse to let go of sin. Okay. So the next point I want to make. Before. I close out this message. Because there is a third part. Is the acceptance of Jesus. Which I've talked about repeatedly on YouTube. In Enterprise 7. Okay. But a person can't get to a point of accepting Jesus unless he or she first believes, which we already talked about in John 3, 16. Okay. So as believers, we accept Jesus. We don't doubt. We accept Jesus. Okay. When we believe in what he has said, we trust in him to save us from all this sin that's out here. You see, now let's go over to Acts 10, 43, 10, 43. To him, all the prophets, and this is the new King James version of the Bible to him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Once again, coming back to belief. Okay. So you receive remission of sins when you believe in him. Okay. So you don't have to be bound by what somebody said. Anyone who believes in Jesus. Okay. Listen up. Anyone who believes in Jesus. They have their sins forgiven. And that's because of. That power, right? That power that he holds. The things that he did. Okay? But if I don't believe, my sins are not forgiven. And this is why some folks go around and around that merry-go-round. Okay? That merry-go-round that they cause. They cause because of their sin. Because of their disobedience, because of their rejection of, of the one true God and all things truthful and righteous and so forth. Okay. And we can't do anything with folks that want to, that want to confuse everything, that want to, uh, nitpick, 
that want to um, present themselves as something more than what they are. I can't do anything with a prideful person. I've tried. I've tried over the years, especially men, to talk to them about the things of God. Okay. In so many different ways. And many times not even saying God or Jesus, but just speaking truth. And you know what? Wasn't well received. Because when a man or woman has made up in his or her mind that I am going to be who I'm going to be. That's it. We got to shake the dust off our feet and keep it moving. Some of you all, you trying to make that square peg fit into a round hole. You're trying to do it in your marriage, at the workplace, the church and everywhere else. And you are hurting your witness when you do that sort of thing because you start driving you know, your point, you start being real mean and real disrespectful at times because that person is being mean to you, right? Because that person is not receiving what you are saying. And so there is the ugliness that shows up. You didn't mean to say what you said in that way. You didn't mean to take it there. But so-and-so said something and it made you so angry to the point where folks forgot that you was a believer. Come on. I can speak to this. That's why God will speak to us in a quiet voice at times. For those who have an ear, let them hear. Be quiet. Stop talking. Walk away. Do something different. You made your point. Let it go. Some of you all, you need to check that audio out on let the matter drop. Okay? Some folks, they've been keeping a matter going for days, weeks, months, even years. Still talking about it and nobody's calling, nobody's writing, nobody's coming around and still running their mouths about things that happened 5, 10, 15, 20 some years ago. And you know, this will keep you bound. Okay. Gossip, lies, exaggerations, and so forth will keep you, keep you, uh, separated from God, right? It all falls under sin. Being in a sexually immoral relationship, you know what the Bible says that will keep you separated from God. Being drunk. Okay. Being on drugs and so forth will keep you separated from God. Being greedy, being mischievous, okay, being unforgiving will keep you separated from God. When I said forget it, I'm done. I can't keep holding on to all these sins. I'm not going to keep on partying and acting like a fool. I'm not going to keep on getting on the phone, talking to these folks and stuff. When the Lord specifically told me that he has me on a mission and I cannot keep people in my circle right through here. Okay. When I finally stopped fighting up against what God was telling me I needed to let go of and so forth. That's when I became closer to the Lord. Somebody needed to hear that. That's when I became closer to the Lord. Some folks, your marriage to the wrong person is what's keeping you separated from God. Your marriage is a hindrance because you know that when you got married to that person, he wasn't saved and you was backsliding or you wasn't saved and he was saved. And now he's backsliding. The relationship is not the same. So that's when you go to the Lord and you say, Lord, unless you're going to change some things, unless this man's heart or this woman's heart is where it's supposed to be. I don't want to continue to be in a relationship that's going to keep me mentally, physically and spiritually bound. OK, I'm tired, Lord Jesus. I relinquish. I relinquish this fight. My hands are too short to box with you. I keep fighting with you to keep him and he's flawed. Or I keep fighting, you know, with God, some man says to keep her. You see, I'm telling you, some of you all catch hold of this. When you're accepting Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, there is so much freedom in that. I know sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but there is. There is so much freedom. Let's go over to John and I'm going to take you to 14. Okay, John 14, 6. Now, John 14, 6 said, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Okay, so these religions that are out here. Okay, and we're not putting anybody's religion down, but we're going on what the scripture says. If. They don't 
say in their doctrine something like this. Jesus being the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the father except through Jesus. Okay. Then you got to let that particular faith go. Okay. I didn't write the Bible, so don't go shooting the messenger. You know what the scripture says. Well, I get peace doing this and I get peace joining this group and I get peace when I read this Bible and this book and this. I'm sure you do, but we're talking about peace with God. And so in order to have peace with the one true God, you got to accept his son, Jesus. Okay. You got to believe that, um, he, uh, that he did what he did. I mean, you know, we, we can't keep playing these little games. Some folks, they play little games. They play little games. And this is what I mean by it. They will borrow from this particular faith because this faith is going to give them X, Y, Z money. Okay. For instance, then they'll borrow from this faith because this one was there, um, for my mother, my father, my sister, my brother. And so therefore I'm going to believe, uh, this particular faith. And then this one, you know, she'll go over to this church because, well, this church, um, they're just laid back. They're cool people and they're not heavy into essential doctrine and so forth. Um, and then somebody else will go to some, some type of organization, um, where, uh, there's just not any Christianity being preached. Okay. This is why you get this mix up that goes on with some of these folks. And I've had them show up on my channel where you can tell by the way they are writing that they are very confused. And some of the things that they're saying don't sound anything like what this Bible says. And this Bible, okay says, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the father except through me. Okay. We cannot argue that this is what it says. And this is where there's freedom. There's peace for some folks, because if you can hold on to that, then, Hey, going back to that accident, when the accident shows up and God forbid, you're the one that passes away. You already know <laughs> I'm good with God. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Because. I came to the father through Jesus. Now let's uh, continue to read. Verse seven says, if you really knew me, if you really knew me, some folks, they got to, you know, check themselves. If you really knew me, you would know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Okay. This was serious back then, and it's still serious to this day because God uses signs, visions, and wonders even now for some folks. He loves you so much that he gives you some things that you know that you know it was nothing but God that gave you those things. So why would you even doubt or let the enemy show up and, and mess with you about your faith? So the minute you come across those types of uh, religions or organizations or civic group associations where they're denouncing all things related to Jesus, God, Holy Spirit, and so forth. Uh Oh, sorry. I can't be a part of your group. Okay. So that closes out part two of this three part series when the accident happens. Okay. And now we are going to move on to uh, part three in the next audio message. In the meantime, please do check the description box for anything that might be of interest. You've been listening to YouTube in Enterprise 7. Feel free to subscribe. Also, we do welcome donations. Blessings to you.